Hi everyone, my name is Emily Todd, and I chose this topic of Chesapeake Bay emissions since my lab mates and I have been working all semester on the subject for our group project. So I wanted to take this opportunity to get down to the specifics and find out exactly what's been going on with our beloved Chesapeake Bay. The goal of my research was to find out the types of emissions that are damaging the Chesapeake Bay, harming its inhabitants, and preventing new life. The maps here show an order from left to right show bottom oxygen levels, surface salinity, chemical contaminants, and temperatures of the Chesapeake Bay. The purpose of my research was to gather information on key points pertaining to emissions affecting the Chesapeake Bay. I narrowed it down to five pinpoint topics of focus. My research includes what effects have emissions had on the Chesapeake Bay, including what specifically, if any, has been affected the most by emissions. What types of emissions have impacted and polluted the Chesapeake Bay the most? What research is being done on these effects? Are there any other controversial factors aside from air quality and water quality that affect the Chesapeake Bay? And what is the most effective ways of reducing these emission impacts? For my research, I had the biggest honor of interviewing Tom Horton. According to Chesapeake Bay Action Plan, he covered environmental issues for the Baltimore Sun from 1974 until 2006. He is the author of several books about Chesapeake Bay and has written for magazines including National Geographic, Rolling Stone, The New York Times, and The Boston Globe. He teaches writing and environmental studies at Salisbury University and contributes regularly to Chesapeake Bay Magazine and the Bay Journal News Service. He's currently working on a book on chickens for W.W. Norton Publishers. He lives in Salisbury and spends his free time on bicycles and in kayaks. Horton worked for five years as an educator at the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, where he authored Turning the Tide, a book on solutions to the Chesapeake's water quality problems. I asked him the series of questions I covered previously and the exact questionnaire shown here. Blue crab pollution is at all-time lows in which restrictions have been put in place on catches, as well as oyster harvesting has been particularly demolished. Blue crab population is at an all-time low in which restrictions have been put in place on catches, as well as oyster harvesting has been practically demolished. Nitrogen fueling growth of algae that absorbs the oxygen as it is composed that marine life needs to survive, which makes the water foggy, blocking sunlight to sea grasses, fish, oysters, and crabs. These are called dead zones and are not just a problem for our bay, but almost 450 worldwide with the same issue. This is calculated by 13 indicators of water quality, habitat, and marine life, with a goal of 40 out of 100 around the year 2010. By 2013, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation was finally able to raise the health score for the first time in years, but to only a 32 out of 100 or D-plus report card score. Tom told me specifically, and I quote, There have been some outbreaks of toxic algae that have made humans sick. Not widespread. Not yet. This is the biggest pollutant of the Chesapeake Bay. This comes from sewage plants and farms, but nearly a third of it comes from the air containing nitrate from smog air pollution, making about 28 to 35 percent of the base pollution coming from the air between what falls from the air to the water, as well as nitrate runoff from land with rain. Air containing nitrogen that falls onto the woods, about 10 percent of it escapes, but the contaminants that fall onto the roadways and parking lots, about 99.9 percent .9 of that escapes. Air pollution has been studied over the past 20 to 30 years, and its research on the area has increased since the 90s. When the Bay's cleanup began in 1983, the EPA, or Environmental Protection Agency, didn't even consider or list air as a pollution source. While they knew it was, they just hadn't gotten around to that aspect at the time. The recognition of cleansing the air to promote cleanliness of the Chesapeake Bay has been more recent than other causes of pollutants, such as sewage. As the system is used to promote chickens' health, what it does is pull ammonia out of the housing that ends up in the bay. 
To test this theory of emissions, the planting of trees around chicken houses to prevent ammonia from spreading to the bay has been conducted most recently. Improvements on vehicle emissions from the 80s as newer cars are cleaner and regarding their exhaust emissions, as well as very new addition of electric cars, has made for less emissions on the Chesapeake Bay for them over the past few decades. Chicken farming in Maryland is the biggest impact regarding the Maryland portion of emission contributions. As far as from Pennsylvania, this is a huge impact as half of the fresh water contributing to the Chesapeake Bay comes from the Susquehanna itself. On behalf of their share to the bay pollution and cleanliness, they are not as nearly up to par as Maryland and Virginia are. That being said, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation has discussed actually suing the state of Pennsylvania for not maintaining their share. As the states Delaware, New York, and West Virginia all contribute, not a lot of their pollutants end up in the Chesapeake Bay, as much as Maryland, Virginia, and Pennsylvania's waste does. The Federal Air Act. This is the biggest implementation we can promote, with this enforced requirements on means of cleaner air to reduce the bay pollution against nitrate from air and runoff, which is sadly not as strongly enforced as it should be. With farm buffers and cover crops, these cause farmers to be more cautious of their fertilizer use, making for less fertilizer out of sewage plants. Improvement on cars and factory emissions, cleaner air from vehicles as well as electric cars, and minimizing factory smokestacks. Road paving, going stones and ditching the paving will minimize on emissions produced by um, the Paving Act itself. Um, foresting, keep and grow forests as they absorb dirty air preventing which is captured from reaching waterways to the bay in contact with the bay itself. This research has shown me how imperative it is that all involved, including us as individuals, do our part to save our bay as it harms so much in a chain reaction of damage. Citizens, you can contribute in more ways than one. We demand that the Federal Law Air Acts enforce air quality standards to promote innovation to airborne pollution problems, as well as these adjustments you can implement at your own home. To conclude, I have enjoyed this research as I am already a fan of biological sciences and has hit even more close to home quite literally working with my very own Chesapeake Bay. Thank you professors, faculty, fellow honor students, and all involved for this astounding opportunity. I would also like to give a huge special thank you to Tom Horton and his time for making this all possible for me.